Welcome back to the animation segment of the After Effects basic training series. What we're going to do is cover animation, keyframes, motion blur, and pretty much everything to do with that right now. First thing we'll do is create a new composition using this piece of footage. So what I'm going to do is drag it into the make new comp button and it's going to create a new composition using all of the settings from that file. And with this composition, the first thing we want to focus on is the transformations for this layer. So we'll click on this arrow and we have our transform properties. And then if we click on that arrow, we have all of our main transformations, anchor point, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. Now the anchor point is this center point on our footage. And what that is, is basically the pivot point for the layer. So if I were to rotate, you see the rotation occurs around that point. Or if I scale in, we scale in to that point. Now we can change that point by clicking on this tool up here called the pan behind tool. And we can click and drag this to anywhere we want. And now if we rotate, the rotation occurs around that point instead. Of course we have our position, scale, as I showed you earlier, rotation, and our opacity of the layer. Now these are all animatable properties. Now we can reset all of the transform properties by clicking here. Or if we right click on any parameter, we can then reset it specifically using this dialog. Now say I want to fade this clip in. Well, let's go back to our main arrow tool. And what we want to do is keyframe the opacity from 0 all the way up to 100 over the period of, say, 1 second. So to do that, what we want to do is start at 0 and turn the opacity down to 0. So I type 0, hit Enter. Then if we click on the stopwatch, that sets a keyframe at that point in time. Then if we move forward to one second in time using the current time indicator, I can then bring the opacity up to 100%. Then if I play this back by hitting my RAM preview button, you see that our clip fades in over that one period of time. After Effects essentially interpolates that data across time. Now this works for any parameter. So Say I want to get rid of this. Well, I can shut the stopwatch off, and those keyframes are then eliminated. Now, say I want to make a position keyframe. Well, click on the stopwatch, move forward a couple of frames, and move the layer. And you can see a motion path is then created. Then if I play this back or scrub through it, you can see that the layer animates. Well, what I can do if I zoom out here is I can right-click and reset this and then move to the beginning of this timeline and just move this layer off of the frame. Now if you hold down shift it'll stay moving left to right or up and down and that's kinda nice if you're trying to keep things in a straight line. So I'm gonna move it just out of the frame and then you're gonna see that this animates in and if I play this back hitting the RAM preview we have a nice animation. Now I'm gonna set the work area so that when I render it only renders a small portion. Now I can bring this in by just grabbing it or if I can hit the letter N on the keyboard it'll set it to the end or if I hit the letter B it'll set the beginning of the work area. But in this case I want the work area to start at the very beginning. Now the animation is a bit abrupt. It kind of comes and then it just stops instantly. Well I can change that. If I select this keyframe I can hit F9 on the keyboard and it changes the kind of keyframe from a linear keyframe to a Bezier keyframe. And this Bezier keyframe allows this to kind of smooth in. It's called an Easy Ease keyframe. So now if I play this back, you can slightly see that it sort of slowly stops. And that's kind of what we want. Now we can also move the keyframes around if we want the animation to be longer or shorter. Now one thing that might be missing from this is motion blur. And motion blur is basically when something moves too quickly it kind of blurs across the frame. Well After Effects has built in motion blur. Now to turn on the motion blur every layer has a switch with a little ball bouncing. And that is the motion blur switch. So if we click that, that turns it on. Then for the composition 
we can turn on the motion blur switch here, which enables it globally. Then if we play this back, you'll see our clip now has motion blur. Okay, and the motion blur works for most any of the transformation properties. So if we rotate it as well, turn on the stopwatch for rotation, move forward, I can then set a keyframe without even changing the parameter by just clicking in this little checkbox here. Then if I move back to the beginning, I can rotate this 50 degrees or so, play it back. And our layer now kind of flies in. We can also add our easy ease curve to this keyframe by hitting F9 as well. And that'll just make the animation a little bit smoother. Now, keyframes can be manipulated just as their parameters. And what we can do is we can copy keyframes. If we select a range of them, I can hit Edit, Copy, or Control Copy, and then Edit, Paste. And then keyframes are then pasted again. Now, of course, they're going to interpolate in between each other. Now, you can reverse the order of them by dragging it to the other side of a keyframe. And then if we move these closer together, what we've created is sort of a fly on, and a fly off. We can also select a range of keyframes and if you hold down Alt or Option on the Mac we can drag the end of the range and sort of shrink or grow it with the values staying relative in the distance from each other. So you kind of see they kind of squish in or squish out. That's pretty helpful for speeding up animations or slowing them down. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this by shutting off the stopwatch and hitting the reset for the transform. That takes us back to the default level. Now, here are some good shortcuts that I think you should know. If the layer is set at the default level like this, if you hit the letter S, scale comes up. If you hit the letter T, opacity, A, anchor point, R, rotation, and what am I missing? P for position. And the great thing about this is if you want to get directly to a specific parameter without using up all your screen space, you can use these shortcuts. Now, you can also hit scale by S, hold down shift, hit P, that brings up the scale and the position. And then with shift down again, hit R, and that way you can bring up any specific parameters that you want to affect. Now, like I said, this works with filters as well. So with the layer selected, I'm going to choose effect, blur, fast blur. And what I can do is turn the fast blur up, turn on the repeat edge pixel to clear up the edges, set a keyframe for the blurriness. And remember, keyframes all matter on where the current time indicator is. So if you want the keyframe to be at the very beginning, make sure your current time indicator is at the very beginning. Click on the stopwatch, move forward, turn the value down to zero. And now we've created an animation where the blur kind of slowly fades out. Well, what if I want to bring up these parameters in the timeline? Well, we can toggle down to our effects, to our fast blur, and here it is, keyframes and all. But there's a lot of extra information that we may not need to look at. Well, we can close it, select the layer, and hit U. And what the U key does is brings up all of the properties that have keyframes applied to it. So if I were to bring up the opacity, holding down shift and the letter T, I can turn the stopwatch on and you know fade it out just a little bit. Then if I were to collapse this and hit U again, those parameters would both come up because they have keyframes applied to them. Now, say I made an adjustment to my position. Holding down shift and P, I brought the position up. I can adjust the position, but I'm not gonna add a keyframe. And then I'll collapse this. I can hit the letter U and that'll bring up all my keyframed values. Then if I hit U twice, this brings up all the parameters that have been changed from their default level. So the repeat edge pixels is usually off, but I turned it on, so it shows up. The position has been slightly offset, so it shows up as well. And that's nice for bringing up any edited parameters. Let's go ahead and delete all these for now. I'm gonna reset the transform, delete our fast blur, and collapse the layer properties. Then I'm going to go back to my project window and I'm going to take this cloud image and drag it out to our comp. 
Now let's talk about some more of the functions in the comp window. If I hit the tilde key, the key next to the number one, I can then bring up a full screen mode that allows me to scale up layers. I can also take the rotation tool and rotate the layer directly in the monitor. Now if I go back to our main view, I want to show you a few things in the timeline. Now the way the timeline works is a stack. Basically anything on top shows up on top in the composition window. Now if I move this just out of the way, you'll notice that the layers are there. They're simply being hidden by anything that's on top. Now I can simply select the name, click it, and drag it beneath it, which allows you to move layers around. You can also toggle on this transparency switch. This allows you to see what is transparent in the background so you're not confusing it with layers. Now in our timeline we also have our eye switch which turns layers on or off. We also have our solo switch which will solo any one layer or you can solo multiple layers if you have a large composition. A few other switches here we have our 3D switch which we'll get into a little bit later and our parenting switch which is a very powerful function. For example, if I take our cloud layer, put it on top, and say I just kind of stick it right here, you know, this is obviously photorealistic compositing here, and what I can do is grab this pick whip and drag it to my Tino layer. And now if I take my Tino layer and move it around in the composition, you see that that layer kind of stays connected to it. And that's because it's acting as its child and doing whatever it does. Now we can undo that by just clicking on none. And of course we can add effects directly to layers, but we can also create an adjustment layer. And this is a special layer. So if I select layer, new adjustment layer, what this is gonna do is create a layer on top of our composition. And now if I add a blur to that layer, the blur is going to affect everything beneath this layer. This is helpful, say you want to add color correction to everything and you don't want to have to copy and paste it to every other layer. You can choose effect, color correction, curves, make your color adjustment, and it applies it to all of the layers beneath it. Now, we can also bring the opacity of the adjustment layer down, so if I hit T, I can turn the opacity down, which kind of lowers the intensity of this specific effect. We can also turn the fast blur on and move the adjustment layer beneath the layer. So now it only affects this layer, not the layer of the clouds, which is above it. So if you have a bunch of layers, you can just put the adjustment layer over the layers you want to affect. Now, it will affect everything beneath it, and that's sort of the way it is. You can also create layers yourself in After Effects without using any footage by choosing Layer, New, Solid. And the solid settings allow you to make backgrounds. So say I want to make a red background, choose OK, choose OK, it adds it to my project. I can drag this to the background and now I have a nice red background that I can, you know, add titles to or, you know, make a video screen that has a bunch of, bunch of smaller videos on it. Pretty good. I mean, this is, uh, this is like NBC style graphics here. Okay, well that's it for the animation segment. Check out the keying and transparency segment for a little bit more advanced compositing tricks.